here. Not too long ago, we were all gathered about two and a half miles away at Congreg Congregation at time, mourning the loss of 13 victims who were killed during their prayer services. Here we are today, mourning yet again. This time we're mourning 50 victims. Five, zero, 50 victims. The oldest of whom was 71 years old, and the youngest of whom was three. The founder of the mosque that was attacked opened the door for the shooter, and his last words were, Assalamu alaikum, brother. Peace be upon you, brother. And then he was shot and killed. All were there to spiritually connect with their creator on our holy day of Friday. Most who were there were mercilessly gunned down in what we would consider a sanctuary or a safe space solely because they were Muslim. Islamophobia is one branch of the tree of bigotry. That same soil that grows Islamophobia, grows anti-Semitism, grows racism, and all hatred. Sadly, we at Islamic Foundation even have a direct connection to one of those who was murdered. The mother, sister, and cousins of Muhammad Imran Khan, age 37, are congregants of our mosque. This year has been an incredibly trying time for this family. In the past six months, Muhammad's father, a regular Musalli, a regular praying individual at the mosque, passed away. And we actually held his funeral here. And now they're dealing with this tragedy. The family has requested anonymity and space to cope with all that they're going through. We know that each and every one of us in this room is praying from the depths of our hearts for Muhammad Imran and his family. We grieve for each and every victim. We mourn with their families and raise our hands to God, pleading for their salvation. We may opine on why such a tragedy transpired, but my Muslim faith tells me never to despair. In our faith, we believe the victims have been reunited with our Creator and are in a much better strait. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran, Think not of those who are killed in the way of Allah as dead. No, they are alive, and they are with their Lord, and they have provisions. We welcome you all with open heart. We appreciate your concern and your tremendous compassion. We come together as a community to remember and reflect upon what has transpired and how we now move forward together. <coughs> we'll begin this night's program with a recitation of the Holy Quran by Mustafa Sayyid. Thank <laughs> you. 
قد جمعوا لكم فاخشوهم فزادهم إيمانا وقالوا حسبنا الله وقالوا حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل فانقلبوا بنعمة من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبعوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم صدق الله العظيم The most gracious, the most merciful Think not of those who are killed in the way of Allah as dead Nay, they are alive with their Lord and they have provision they rejoice in what Allah has bestowed upon them, of his fountain, bounty, rejoicing for the sake of those who have not yet joined them, but are left behind. On them no fear shall come, nor shall they grieve. They rejoice in a grace and a bounty from Allah, and that Allah will not waste the reward of the believers. For those who answered the call of Allah and the messenger Muhammad peace be upon him, after being wounded, and for those of them who did good deeds and feared Allah, there is a great reward. Those believers unto whom the hypocrites said, Surely the pagans have gathered the, against you a great army, therefore fear them. But it only increased the believers in faith. And they said, Allah alone is sufficient for us, and he is the best disposer of all affairs. So they returned with grace and bounty from Allah. No harm touched them, and they followed the good pleasure of Allah, and Allah is the owner of great bounty. We pray that all those who have become martyrs for their faith, all those, no matter the religion that they follow, are with God, with the best of peace and blessings upon them, and the best of patience for each of their families. And I would like to ask the chairman of the board of the Islamic Foundation to reverse the stage. This is Brother Afzal Khan. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all for coming today and being part of this visit. We are gathered here today to show solidarity and remember those who are taken away from us without any reason or justification. What happened in New Zealand is not part of any religion or any society. We pray to God Almighty to give highest place in paradise to all those who died in this heinous crime and strength their beloved ones to bear this tremendous loss. We also pray for all those who are injured for their speedy and full recovery. May Allah bless them all and thank you very, very much for coming and joining us today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Greetings of peace and blessings. And may the mercy of Allah, our Creator and our Sustainer, be upon everybody in this gathering. When, when occurrences like this happen and lives are lost and pain is felt and dark times appear to be all that is there, we ask ourselves a few questions. Notably, why did this happen? And what I hope the next question is, what can I do about it? And to look into why this happened, from our faith, we believe that everything happens for a reason. And if there is any silver lining, if there is any condolence that can be had by 
the appearance of this hate and terribleness is that it shines a light on the goodness within humanity. That evil exists in this world so that good may be recognized. The evil that has existed, the evil that has shown its face just a few days ago, is only making this gathering more apparent. That the 150, 200, I'm not even sure how many people are here tonight. It's a beautiful sight, mashallah, takbir, Allahu Akbar. Allah. Of the, I would say almost 300 people at least that are here tonight, definitely looks like more, we'll get numbers I'm sure in a little bit. <laughs> but the fact that we're able to come here today is a beautiful thing. While it's a terrible reason to come together, and we say this unfortunately almost every couple of months now, and that's a sign of the times in which we are in, but let it also be an apparent sign of the good that is within each and every one of the souls and hearts in this room today. That we can come together. That hate will not stop us from joining together. That we will not be scared away from our houses of worship. That our hearts will be stronger than our minds. So why does evil exist in this world? So that examples of good can be seen and known. And then we wonder, well, what can I do about it? And to that, my brothers and sisters in faith, my brothers and sisters in humanity, my brothers and sisters in community, I recommend and I advise that we start having conversations at our dinner tables. Amen. It starts with our kids. That if we're going to erase hate, we shouldn't give it a place to grow. That if we're going to eradicate this evil, then we stop it before it even starts. That's right. mm -hmm. That we talk to our kids about loving our neighbors, about not having to agree with someone in order to respect them. That somebody that's different can in fact be better than me because that's what my faith teaches. Allah tells us in the Quran that don't even think about saying a word about that person because in the eyes of God, that person is already better than you. I am a servant on this earth. I'm a slave to my creator. I am not a master to make demands. I'm not a master to make this my domain. But God teaches me and my prophet peace and blessings be upon him has shown me how to live in this life as a servant. That the reason for existence is given to us in the Qur'an. Allah tells us that the only reason you were created is to serve. Is to be there for one another. You serve God by your acts of worship. You serve humanity who are the dependents of God by being good to one another. By respecting one another. By being there for one another. So that we can fulfill the prophecy of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who told us that you will be ba'dukum li ba'dil zaheer. Literally, if this was to be translated, to say that we will have one another's backs. Amen. We support each other in these times of trial. And we're there for each other when things are good. And this, my brothers and sisters, this, my beloved community, my lo beloved neighbors, everyone in this gathering and everyone that's watching this and everyone that couldn't be here and everyone that wanted to be here, let us not leave this room tonight without resolving to erase the hate before it is even written. I pray for this gathering to be that one of blessings and of peace and that we find forgiveness and solace in this time of hardship. And I pray that God is with us all. Jazakumullah khair. May you all be rewarded with the best of this world and the best of this next. I thank you and I appreciate you being here, as do all of the Muslims in our community. Appreciate the love and respect and support that we have from our neighbors. And that is what makes us American. Thank you and God. Just one quick housekeeping item. Um, as most people know, the Muslim community, sir, uh, we we pray uh, sunset prayers, and that's supposed to be at seven, about 7.10 today. So for the Muslim community here, please don't rush up at 7.10. The Imam has made um, accommodations so that we will pray at 7.15, maybe even 7.20, but they will not start the prayers without everyone down here. So please stay calm. <laughs> we will have our prayers on time. And um, at this point, just to bring everybody up to speed, what we're going to do is we have so many honored and esteemed guests here. We wanted to give everyone that asked an opportunity to speak. And we're going to allow 
the leaders that have come and taken time out of their busy schedules to share their thoughts and kind words. So we'll begin today with the DuPage County Sheriff, Mr. Mendrick. Hello and thank you for your hospitality. Um, I'm so sorry, my condolences to all the families and friends and people who knew the people. In our police culture, we've gone through some of this too in the last couple months, so it's been hitting us kind of hard too, so I can identify it's terrible. This has to stop. It's all been through gun violence, and we're working hard to stop the problem, but it just keeps occurring. This is getting closer and closer to home. Uh, you know, for about the last 15 years, I've done the uh, mosque and other religious institution uh, protection patrols during holidays, parking events, when something tragic happens. And uh, this last Friday wasn't any different. Uh, myself and our deputies drove out to mosques uh, to visit to make sure uh, everyone knows that they're safe, that we're there for them. But I have to say, <clears throat> excuse me, this was, this was a harder one. It was actually kind of gut-wrenching because what I saw this Friday when I would drive up to a mosque were security on rooftops, triple security in the parking lots, people who were afraid to pray. I mean, what larger atrocity could you have where people are afraid to worship? I just, it really, really hurt to see that look on people's faces uh, at mosques. And, you know, yeah, I, don't, I just don't know what to say. But what I will say is a lot of times good can uh, come out of things like this, like the Imam said. Uh, that day, driving around, we were welcomed into all the mosques. Uh, they brought us inside, they offered us food, drinks, such a welcoming culture. Uh, it was a good opportunity for us to get to know a lot of people in our community. And this here, just seeing how many people have come here, again, shows that something good can come from something bad. We're all together and it's consolidated. Uh, you know, Law enforcement needs to be involved in their community, and that's what I pledge to do, is to make sure that we keep this going, that we include everybody in our community. We're looking at starting a, an advisory board at the sheriff's office that will have religious leaders uh, helping to make the, the police and law enforcement better understand the needs of your community so we can help make you safer, so we can help with a security plan, so we can help you feel safe and have the patrol that you need when you need it. That's what we do. So again, my sincerest condolences to all the, the victims and the families and the friends of the people in New Zealand. It's just a, a horrible thing that happened. Law enforcement identifies with you. Thank you. Can we ask all of the people that are sitting to please stand up for one minute? Pull your chairs up, maybe a foot. <laughs> peace and interfaith dialogue. And so it is with humility and a deep appreciation for the faiths from which we all come that I come today to bring words of support and condolence. And just this morning's worth of worship, we spent time in prayer for the Muslim community here locally and around the world. We spend time in prayer for peace, even in the darkened corners of our world. As I was driving here this afternoon, I was reminded of Dr. Martin Luther King's words when he said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And I think everyone gathered here today 
symbolizes the kind of justice that we all seek and pray for. It is a part of our faith tradition to seek guidance and comfort from our holy scriptures as you have already shared with us today yours. And so in times of comfort and of trial, I have often gained support from the words that Jesus spoke in the Gospel of John when he said, Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Today we are not afraid in the face of the hatred that we might face. But today we are strong and courageous as we stand from our many faiths, from our many perspectives, to bring about unity of peace. I would offer a brief prayer if you would join me. Lord of Healing, we lift up the community of Christ Church, as well as those nearby here in Villa Park, who mourn the loss of life as people gather for religious prayer. We pray for an end to violence of any kind, especially gun violence. May your justice prevail in the face of a world that is often scarred by injustice. We stand in solidarity for peace and ask your grace to fill us all. In the name of the one God. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Thank you. I'd like to now call to the stage our Honorable Representative Sean Caston, who represents the 6th District of the United States House of Representatives. Um, it's truly really beautiful to say that can make up for what's happened, but there's no words that any of us can say that can, can accomplish more than the amount of love in this room and the amount of love that was in, was in Christ Church this morning. And just stay focused on that. Um, we, we have made great progress as a society over the last several decades. It was a more tolerant world, a more love-filled world, a more diverse world. We've had a pretty rough two years. The, and, and I guess I have, a, I have a request and an offer, a request for you and an offer for you. My, my request is that if we are going to Dr. King's dream, that means also calling out this hatred and calling it out with love when we see it, but do not ignore it. That's right. When you see it in your heart, confront it, acknowledge it, and heal it. When you, when you see it in your leaders, whether they be at pulpits or state houses or white houses, call it out. That's acknowledge right. it. Call it out with love, but do not ignore it. As my, as my new colleague, John Lewis, likes to remind us all the time, sometimes you just gotta get in the way. <laughs> and, and get in the way in the name of good trouble, but cause some good trouble. So that's my request for all of you, and my offer to all of you is, that, is to acknowledge that, that this, this hatred that's out there, it, it is coming from people who do not look like the diversity in this room. It comes from a very homogeneous population. And when people who wear the hijab or, or have browner skin call out that hatred, sometimes it's not heard by the people who need to be listening. And if I can be any kind of a vessel or a message that might be heard by others, please let me know what I can do. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. practice our tradition of making room for your elders. <laughs> so for our youth, our Muslim youth, I ask you to your hands so that your elders can take a seat. If we have seats, could you please kindly raise your hands so that people can come and make it seats. Thank you, youth. I'm very proud of you. 
as people are getting situated, I'm going to call to the stage one of our interfaith committee's closest allies and friends, Reverend Jay Moses from the Hope Presbyterian Church of Newton. Well, there are a few of you out there. Um, the last few days have been, um, for some of us, uh, a lot of traveling. As, as you go to different mosques and masjids, um, people gather uh, to get near the light when uh, such darkness strikes us. I just want to echo what Imam said. In all of our traditions, let's say mine, the Christian tradition, there's always the church. But then there's the invisible church. That means those are folks that are, that are with me, but I don't know who they are. And then in the Muslim tradition, there's the Ummah, which I see a lot of you here today. But then there are also people in the greater Ummah, or the believers, who you don't see all the time. Israel has always had the greater Israel. The Panth, uh, the Sikh tradition, has always had it larger than a Gudwara can hold. And I thought about what can I say uh, that's new, going from these events to events today, is that we get together. Is that in many ways, why are we gathering here is because we need a holy place. And that in our time, this is the holy people in each of our traditions. Why does God give us revelation at times through history why does God give us this moment to see people from so many different walks of life? So many, whether religious or not. I think the Muslim tradition would say it is because God is merciful. And I would just add it's because we need it. We need to see each other. And that perhaps this is the temple in which God will begin to do a new work. That is larger to whatever community you're in. But as you look around here, you see the greater community. I wish you blessings and peace. I call to the stage someone I consider a friend, Reverend Mike Silver, from the Union Church of Instinct. Assalamu alaikum. It is a joy to be with all of you tonight, to be present together in the midst of this. On behalf of the Union Church of Hinsdale, one of many Christian congregations in this area who are grieving and mourning with you, the Muslim community tonight, I want to express my care and concern and my condolences. I want to remember one of the texts of our faith, the 23rd Psalm, which has a line that says, Lo, though I walk through the darkest valley, I do not fear, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Notice that this text does not say that there will be no dark valleys. It does not say that the darkness will not come. It says that God will be with us in the midst of it. And I pray that that will be true for all of those in New Zealand and all of us, especially the family here in this community touched by that loss and by so many others. Of course, this is not just an attack on one mosque, not just an attack on one community, but an attack on an entire faith. And so I know those of you here in Villa Park feel that attack personally, and we are with you in the midst of it. You know, this is not just hatred that happens, geez, what, 8,000 miles away? That hatred is expressed even here in our own community, of course. I want to, in, the, in honor of the representative's comments earlier, Mr. Gaston's comments earlier, call out uh, someone who used to represent this very community. Joe Walsh used to resent, represent this community in Congress, and he said just two days before this shooting that 800 million people in this world of the Islamic faith were violent. 800 million people violent. 
and believed in Islamist ideas. We call that out. That is not acceptable. This morning as we gathered together in my community, we confessed. We confessed our role in white supremacy. We confessed our role in allowing hatred to flourish. Of course, we know that Dr. King said something similar long ago, and just recently I read again that the right-wing extremists aren't counting on support from most white people, just silence. We cannot be silenced in the face of this threat. And finally, I close with what I found to be an inspiring and indeed hopeful word from activist and author Adrian Marie Brown. She said that racist realities in America are not getting worse. They are getting uncovered. And we must hold each other tight and continue to pull back the veil. Let us do that together tonight and always. I'd like to call Senior Rabbi Andrea Kosnowski from Congregation on Time. May all of you be blessed, you who are here in the name of God. May our Muslim brothers and sisters be blessed in the blessing of Allah. I bring a message of solidarity and support from Congregation Ez Chaim of DuPage County. The Quran says, good and evil deeds are not alike. Requite evil with good, and he who is your enemy will become your dearest friend. But none will attain this save those who endure with gratitude are greatly favored by God. To harm another while they engage in prayer is a heinous act. And as Jews, we unfortunately understand this sorrow firsthand. But we cannot stand idly by when one community is attacked for all of us are interconnected. And to be able to be here and empathize with you at this time is a holy thing. We stand with you in the face of evil and hostility, and we commit to continuing to work to create a world where all can be free to pray without fear and without the threat of hatred. That's right. We must not reciprocate hate with hate, but rather to face it with faith and love. We stand united with you, we pray with you, we support you during this time of grief and healing. May Allah comfort those who mourn, and may the souls of all who perish be granted shalom, wholeness, and peace. And let us say together, Friends, I am humbled and honored to be gathered here in your midst tonight, and I bring greetings from my own First Congregational Church of Glen Ellen. But I am here today also on behalf of the Page United. We are a federation of mosques community groups, and other organizations that stand unified in the pursuit of love and justice in an evil and broken world. And we stand unified in our condemnation of hatred in all of its forms. I speak for all of our member organizations, and my own church included, in condemning the actions of those who are determined to engage in violence rather than in dialogue. Those who let bullets speak for them. Those who mistakenly believe that those people, whoever, 
those people are at any given moment are going to kill us if we don't kill them first. What a sad and broken way to live. What a dreadfully sad thing to believe. For too long, we as people, as human beings, have believed that violence is the only solution when in truth, it has never solved anything. That's right. For too long, the story of humanity has been written in blood. For too long, we have blamed people who don't look like us for everything that's wrong with this world. For too long, we have believed that God loves us and us alone. But God's capacity for love, friends, is bigger than ours. Which is perhaps smaller than we care to admit. The Christian, the Jew, the Muslim, the Sikh, the Hindu, all of us are trying to find our way to the divine. And I believe, contrary to what some would have you believe, that we worship the same God. We are people of faith, but we are ultimately just people. Some of us are better or worse than others. But any prejudice that seeks to condemn entire religions, entire nations, entire ethnicities is short-sighted and willfully ignorant, and we have let it prevail for too long. Too long. Far too long. For all of those whose lives have been shattered this week in New Zealand and similar acts of terror around the world, I am sorry. I am sorry that we have built a world where racial, uh, racial and religious prejudice have been allowed to grow like a poisonous weed yes. in our gardens. Yes. I am sorry that this world has failed you. But I stand with you. We stand with you. We always will. Peace, salam, shalom. Amen. At this moment, I'd actually like everybody to focus your attention on Senator Dick Durbin, who was trying very hard to come today, but he was um, tied up because of so many vigils that he had to attend. So he sent a message, and this is for all of us, and um, hopefully it will we'll run. <laughs> if now, we can move ahead and say right. Tragic news that at least 49 people have died as a result of the Muslim massacres in New Zealand. People attacked in mosques who were simply praying and visiting with other families. It's a tragedy which all of us should feel personally because it's not only an attack on these individuals, but it's an attack on some basic values in our world today. Those who schedule this attack use social media to explain exactly why they did it. Their hatred for Muslims, their hatred for immigrants. Think of our own situation here, as people try to exploit the same negative feelings toward other individuals. We've got to make it clear that in the United States and around the world, our values are values of tolerance and acceptance, that people of the Muslim religion and all religions should be treated with respect, and that those who are immigrants to a country are in fact newcomers who can be an important part of our future. That is the story of America. It's the story of so many other countries. I say to my Muslim friends, I grieve for your loss in your community in New Zealand and the hatred and fear that you face so many times uh, throughout the course of your life. We can do better as a nation. It has to start at the top with the President, the Senate, the House of Representatives, but it has to move all the way through our society. So ultimately our children are being taught to accept diversity and to exalt tolerance. for sharing that message with us. And uh, at this point, I'd like to call the Honorable Representative from the 8th District, Sir Ines, in the House of Representatives in the United States Congress, Honorable Roger Krishnamurthy. 
Salaam alaikum. Good evening and thank you to the Islamic Foundation for including me tonight. Today we mourn the 51 lives cut short of a white supremacist in Christchurch, New Zealand. Today, two days after the attacks, we also rem remember the 39 individuals fighting for their lives in New Zealand hospitals. Among them are a two-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl. Please keep all of them in your prayers, but also please remember the bravery of the first responders and the police who arrived at the scene, the bystanders who stood in harm's way to prevent a greater tragedy, and of course the surgeons and medical teams who are fighting round the clock to save the wounded tonight. Let us be clear about what exactly happened two days ago. The terrorists who initiated the attacks intended as their targets not only the Muslims in New Zealand. They intended an attack on all Muslims everywhere in the world. That's right. They intended to spread fear and panic among Muslims everywhere in the world and to send a message that Muslims are not welcome and Muslims are not wanted. Well, I have a message for the mad gunmen and those who would inspire bigotry, whether it's in the White House or in any other place where they lurk. The message is this, today we are all Muslims, today we are all Christians, today we are all Jews, today we are all Hindus, today we are all Sikhs, today we are all human beings. And we stand together to fight fear, to fight Islamophobia, to fight hatred, and to, to fight discrimination. But we've also come here in the midst of our morning to do something else. We've come here galvanized to fight for a more peaceful, more compassionate, more tolerant, more loving, more inclusive, and a better world for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. In reading the stories of the victims, I was especially moved by the story of Mr. Dawood Nabi. You see, Mr. Nabi had fled the Afghan war in the late 1970s to come to New Zealand to establish a better life for himself and his family. He was one of the first victims to die on Friday. You see, he was the one who opened the door to the gunman, and in so doing, he said, welcome, brother. This greeting encapsulates the beauty of Islam, its spirit of inclusion, its spirit of tolerance, and its spirit of openness. And to all Muslims here and everywhere, we in this community at this time and in this place, say to you, welcome brother, welcome sister, welcome home. Thank you. We have been overwhelmed with the outpouring of support from our political leaders. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge a certain few members that are um, in the audience, and I'm sorry if I have missed anyone, that's not intentional, just those that I absolutely do know are here. We received calls from Congressman Bill Foster's office, and they expressed an interest to come. So, um, can I have Hillary Dank rise? She's here representing a, a Congressman Bill Foster. We have Jacqueline Mohammed from Congresswoman Lauren Underwood's office. Sarah Howard, newly elected. We have the mayor of Oprah. Yeah, the mayor of Oprah's 
I want to, before going on to um, the last few speeches, I'd like to recognize Thomas Fema of the Chicago Archdiocese. And Bruce Duffield of the Church of Latter-day Saints. At this point, we have three members of the DuPage County Board that are here. Sadia Covert, Liz Chaplin, and Sean Yonan. And I'd like to make this speech. I wanted to take just a moment to lend to honor the victims. On behalf of the County Board, Chairman Van Cronin and, county, and the County Board, DuPage County Board, we have a statement. Our hearts and our condolences go out to the victims of the senseless massacre in Christchurch this week and to all members of the Islamic community across the world. We are devastated by this horrific act of terrorism and all of you and all of DuPage County stands united with you. Hate has no place in our society and we are committed to doing everything in our power to ensure DuPage County remains a safe place for everyone regardless of religious beliefs. A few years ago there was a hate crime at our local synagogue at that time. And a couple months later, there was a shooting that happened where three Muslim dental students were shot execution style. And there were a number, series of hate crimes that occurred afterwards, which moved me to co-author the new hate crime law in Illinois. However, changes in policy is not enough. I continue to educate people about diversity, about different groups of people, our Christian <coughs> brothers and sisters, Jewish, Muslim, Sikh, Hindus, atheists, LGBT. We're all a part of the same community. And it's important for us to have those dialogues. As a chair of the strategic planning committee, my goal and what I'm proposing to do for the DuPage County is include a core imperative. Right now we have four core imperatives, which includes economic growth and you know, your active issue and all that, but what I notice that we do not have that brings everybody together in DuPage County is diversity and inclusion. Making sure that we all know about one another. So that is the imperative that we are working on and getting on the books for soon in the future. And I will continue to fight for all of you, for all communities, and having those communication channels open and platforms of diversity and where we can learn about one another. Because Islamophobia or anti-Semitism, these are not forms of acceptable, acceptable forms of racism. There is no such thing as an acceptable form of racism. So when you hear, neighbors, friends, elected officials, anybody, say something negative about a person's background, whatever it may be, stop it. Let them know that is not a okay. That is not the conversation we want to Thank you. Good evening. Two Page County Board Chairman Dan Corn sends his regrets for not being able to attend this Peace and Unity vigil. He is currently driving his daughter back to college. But stated the following, I am just sickened by this. Yet another horrific act of hatred. It's beyond words to describe. We condemn the sick, twisted hatred. We must continue to open our hearts and our everyday lives and to act with kindness. And I have some remarks of my own. Our hearts are heavy as we try to grasp and understand this senseless and horrific act of violence. President Barack Obama said after another similar, similar incident that took place in 2011, we are reminded that in the fleeting time we have on this earth, or status, or power, or fame, 
but rather how well we have loved and what small part we have played in making the lives of other people better. As a county board member and as a police officer, I recognize that there is no place for these acts of violence and hate. And I will continue to do my part to ensure that everyone is safe, whether you are out on the, out on the town, out about, in the comfort of your own homes, or in your place of worship. Nobody should ever have to worry about their safety while at their respective place of worship. A note that was left near the mosque in New Zealand read, they may take our innocence, but we will show the world the meaning of love and compassion. Regardless of our differences in cultures, religious beliefs, political beliefs, we will remain united. I pledge to do my part, and I ask you to help me promote peace and unity. Thank you. As your representative on the DuPage County Board, I give my sincere condolences and I share the pain of your community. Over the years, I have come to know this mosque and the beautiful people here. When I woke up and I heard the news of another mass shooting, this time in the Christian Church in New, Ze in New Zealand, my heart sank. The graphic pictures of the bodies that were slain um, were too much to bear. Migrants and meth refugees were among the dead. Seeking a place where they could live in peace they died by violence because of a small man who belonged to a growing group of white nationalists in pursuit of a white state only. I call it our president refuses. It is extremism and white supremacy. As a white American victim, a deep sense of sadness came over me. The death toll is now at 50. CNN is reporting um, among those killed were a Syrian refugee and his teenage sons, a Pakistani academic, and a goalkeeper from the national futsal team. A Syrian or Pakistani mother grieves the loss of a child, just as you or I. A Syrian or Pakistani mother or wife loses, grieves the loss of her spouse, the same as you and I. And although we may eat different foods and have different skin tones and attend different places of worship, we love and we grieve the same. I, today I stand here in solidarity with my Muslim brothers and sisters to let you know I support you and I grieve with you. Board, County Board Commissioner Mary Ozok could not be here today. She wanted to let everybody know here in this room that she was in church praying for all of us and for the Islamic community. Thank you. I'd like to call to the stage Reverend. I'm here representing the Catholic Diocese of Joliet, which includes DuPage County and Bishop Conlon, who couldn't be here today. I'm grateful and proud for the opportunity to be here with all of you. It's very important that we stand together for peace, to stand together against hate, prejudice, racism, and xenophobia of every kind. The Christian message is one of communion and unity the word from which we get the word devil in Greek means the one who divides. We are called to compassion, which literally means to suffer with. God knows our pain. He hears the prayers of those who suffer. As a Christian, I see in Jesus the revelation of God's compassion something I'm trying to model in my own life. One of the most famous sermons of Jesus recorded in the Christian scriptures is the Sermon on the Mount. He said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. <coughs> Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are those who are persecuted, 
for the sake of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As a representative of the Catholic Church, I wish to say to all Muslims, I lament the fact that my Christian brothers and sisters have not always stood with you. But we are here today to do just that. As has been said, I cannot be silent or apathetic. I am affected by what happens to my brother or sister. I am Muslim. Recently, I've been praying a most dangerous prayer. God, I give you permission to enlarge my heart, to be more compassionate, more loving, to every person, regardless of their background, to truly be an instrument of peace. I invite you to do the same. I'd like to invite to the stage. And here to offer words of consolation, words of comfort, and words of support from the Jewish Community Relations Council of Greater Chicago, and from Oak Park Temple, B'nai Abraham Zion, the synagogue that I am proud to be part of. At the heart of the name of my congregation is B'nai Abraham, the children of Abraham, the children of Ibrahim. I am here with you today, we are here with you today, our cousins. We are here because our tradition teaches that the only way to ease a person's pain is to be with them in their pain, to help lift them and hold them close to us and in our hearts. And make no mistake, there is incredible pain in the Ummah, in the world Islamic community. These moments make us feel good, but the pain stays. The pain remains. We are taught that the only thing that can help is one another's presence in the presence of God. On Wednesday, the Jewish community will be celebrating the holiday of Purim, the holiday of Purim. The holiday celebrates a time when the Jewish community was threatened with death because of nationalist hatred. And the only thing that defeated that hatred was the community coming together and ultimately uniting with the community around them, standing up for what they believe in. We are here today to say we will stand together. We will stand together to defeat the hatred that is always outside the door. At the end of a Jewish prayer service, we have a prayer that memorializes those who have died, and that prayer ends with the Hebrew words, O say shalom bim ramav, hu yaseh shalom aleinu v'alkol Yisrael v'alkol yoshvei tevel v'imru, amen. May the one who creates peace in the heavens help us bring peace and comfort to one another. Amen. Called Saab Waikruji Kifabe. That's the greeting from the Sikh community to all of you 
Um, the Sikh community stands in solidarity with all of you, my Muslim brothers and sisters. We condemn this hateful act, and our hearts bleed with you for all the innocent lives that have been lost. And you know, we in the Sikh community have faced this ourselves. In Oak Creek, we had a shooter coming into our Gurdwara, killing Sikhs as well. We feel your pain. And we are here with you today to say, you know, these events are not only dark days in New Zealand, but they are dark days for all of humanity. And if terrorists can find inspiration from cruel and decisive, divisive leaders um, to so willingly act without any regard for anyone's life, you know, they are not only horrific themselves, but so are those whose features and the rhetoric that they give are also the ones who actually give, give them the ammunition to act. Right. So we should stop them as well. Words matter. And may we all as a human race find our humanity again to stop those from, from you know, leashing out these rhetorics that drive all this hatred in our communities and to ensure that history stops repeating itself. I, for one, say enough is enough. Each and every life matter, and we cannot allow for anyone, or no one has any right to take away anyone's lives. So I say to all today, let's stand together, let's pray together, let's also act together, because it is up to each and every one of us to make a difference. Thank you. Unfortunately, the past few years we've seen too many criminal acts and acts of terror fueled by hate, bigotry, and prejudice. And we must do everything we can to stop it. We work very hard in this county to prevent and to ensure that those who commit these types of acts are held accountable. Because when a crime like this happens, when a terrorist act like this happens, the entire community is victimized. We all share in the pain of the victims and the families. And even though it happened on the other side of the world, the pain is felt right here in this community. We are a nation of laws, and these laws have to be respected, and they have to be enforced. And we will continue to do that. And it is my hope that we will, acting together as a community, eradicate hate, prejudice, and bigotry, because hate, prejudice, and bigotry have no place in a civilized society. <laughs> and despite what has happened, and unfortunately we know that with our efforts is probably going to happen again, we must not give up. And we have to keep working together as a community to rid our community of hate, bigotry, and prejudice. And we are now at the tail end of our program, and we'd like to end with one of our own chairmen um, of the Interfaith and Outreach Committee at the Islamic Foundation. Many of you know him for his interfaith work throughout the Chicagoland area. Um, it's my privilege to invite Brother Azam Mazamadi to the stage. Dear friends, uh, brothers and sisters, welcome tonight to this uh, gathering that I can't even describe what I'm looking at right now. It's like a sea of people, wall to wall. To wall. I can't see chairs. I can barely see the walls in the back. I think <coughs> this is a testament to the true humanity that God and our respective faiths expect from each one of us. And you all are here not because something happened in Villa Park, 
Not because something happened in DuPage County, not because something happened in Illinois, but something that happened eight, 9,000 miles away in a place remote that no one had ever heard of until we saw the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> And despite that distance, despite that mile and mile of separation, you, by coming here today, are demonstrating your love, your heartfeltness, and the ultimate expectation that our God expects us to do, which is to be good and to be the best creation of God Almighty. Whenever tragedies occur, people of faith in particular ask, how can this happen? What is it about our faith, our God, our religion, our community, our civilization that causes this? But rather than asking those questions, or if you do ask that question, keep it limited, and then follow up with saying, what? do we see as a result of this tragedy? And what we see is the outpouring of love and support that you all showed here tonight. But also, we complained, and I heard tonight even, a sort of um, uh, a dissatisfaction with leadership, which is true. <laughs> and I think we should not be ashamed or nervous or scared to call out when leadership is bad. of whether the leader is from your local organizations, the state, or our country, or irrespective of an ideology or party, when leadership is bad, we replace leadership, and that's what is democracy is all about. Uh, the famous author Albert Schweitzer said, at times, our own light goes out and, and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Each of us has cause to think with deep gratitude of those who have lighted the flame within us. In addition to you, I also want to recognize the incredible leadership. Just brilliant leadership, loving leadership, demonstrated by Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister of New Zealand. showing how tough you are physically. It is not how angry you can be towards others. It is not how you can show how others are evil and therefore by showing that others are evil you're protecting your own. But true leadership comes from a sense of confidence that you can show empathy and sympathy and protection. And you can even once in a while shed a tear for others. That is true strength and leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank the organizers of tonight's uh, program. This is higher one person has done, but our entire committee, including um, Alia Hussein, who is our wonderful MC today. <laughs> as well as Amir Zahir, who's sitting in front, who has done tremendous effort to lead our interfaith committee for the past several uh, months and years. And all the other interfaith committee members, I'd like to give them a round of applause. Now, um, as you may have noticed, there are prayer rugs in front of you, on the front here and on the side. And we made it a point to represent a, pr a prayer rug is a place of security. It's a place of sacredness and even protection. Prayer rugs today to symbolize the souls that were lost in New Zealand. And we think that that's a fitting tribute, not complete, but a fitting tribute to those poor souls who were kneeling, prostrating, and showing utmost respect for their God and humanity when they were gunned down. 
And I want to wonderful that you're all here. It's wonderful to hear just wonderful statements from our elected officials, our law enforcement, uh, our faith leaders. But honestly, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to have another event like this again. That's right. And in order to pursue that goal, I'd, let, I'd like to ask each one of you, every single one of you, regardless of class, color, education, ideology, or party, I want you to go home not saying this is a wonderful event, wonderful event, beautiful, wasn't it great to see all these people, meet all these people. I want you to go home tonight and think about what can I do? What can I do and what role can I play to make sure an event like this never happens, at least in my town, my city, my community, my congregation, my church, my synagogue, my mosque, my jurisdiction, my state, my county, and my country. What can each one of us do? And I want you to then, secondly, work with others at the educational level, at the political level, at law enforcement, to see how we can address this issue. It's not enough to say we empathize, we sympathize. We've seen these events so many times now. Time to act is now. Fire codes for the Muslims that will be going upstairs. We actually invite all of you to come pray with us. Um, so if we could kindly just that one exit. We have an exit door in the back. We have an exit door to the side. Just to respect fire codes, can we not all converge out through the main exit? Please use all three exits. Exit in a very orderly fashion. We welcome our guests who would like to pray with us to pray with us. And we'll explain, um, I think Ozzy will explain what we're doing. But for those of you that would like to stay, we have snacks in the back. Make yourself comfortable. And we will come back after prayers and uh, socialize and meet with all of you. So, um, Sorry, just one quick announcement. We're going upstairs to perform what we normally call the Mulgrew prayer, the sunset prayer for the Muslims. You're more than welcome to join and participate and observe. I will step However, um, we will then have a concluding full congregational prayer for peace with everybody. So if you'd like to watch that, if those of you who are from the, the media would like to film that, that's fine. And then, those of you, you're more than welcome uh, to say your goodbyes, and the others can come down and have refreshments and continue to socialize, mingle, pray, and connect. Thank you very much. Salam